<sighs> okay, to start off, a lot of people get caught up on part of this. And I understand why, I fully understand. But, it's like they're only cut off on the first part and they just completely ignore the second part. Let me, let me do this, go through. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. So he tested, like, <clears throat> Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, I am here, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son. Isaac, why would God say his only son? Isaac is not Abraham's only son. And God doesn't, it's not human, though, so that he would lie. Unless this is supposed to show something. Whom you love, well, that part definitely true, and only son whom you love. And go to the region of Moriah, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Now this is where a lot of atheists and a lot of people who attack Christianity and well, Judaism to just get, probably Islam, just get hung up on this verse. And like, it says God told him to go kill his son. God wants Abraham to go kill his son. Really? Is, is that what it says? Well, I guess that is. But what, what happens in the story? Is that what happens? <clears throat> also, your son, your only son, God sent his only son as a sacrifice on the mountain. <laughs> on a mountain. <clears throat> But, yes, I get it. You're like, human sacrifice is evil. And I think Genesis chapter 22 is doing this because back then, human sacrifice, especially a young kid or a baby, was considered the highest form of sacrifice you can make because they had so much of, mu of a life to look forward to before you killed them. And so, yeah. This this would be normal. Considered a normal thing back then. Does that excuse it? No. Is that what God wants Abraham to do? Kill his son? No. <laughs> but it says right here in verse 2. Yes, it does. But it's a test. And plus, God said, Through Isaac, you will be made into a great nation. Isaac can't do that if he's dead. Now can he? This is so obvious. This story, one of the reasons this story was here is to subvert the idea that you need to sacrifice a living, breathing human being to be to make a sacrifice a human being to get a God to listen to you. And no, this is not a rejection of Christianity. If you think that, you're profoundly silly. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants. Because Christianity is God coming down in human form. Sacrificing his life. His perfect life. Living a perfect life so we don't have to. Sacrifice and taking... Well, it was a sacrifice because he came down from heaven and suffered and died. It also was him transferring his perfect life to us. And also, that's the old fact he chose to do it. Usually human sacrifice victims when they were chosen made to people. Um... I know a lot of atheists are just going to sit here like, you're just making excuses. No, I'm not making excuses for anything. What am I making excuses for? I'm just explaining to you. You misunderstood what this means. <laughs> Two of his servants and his son Isaac. Like, you, you intentionally want this to be evil. Evil gods just wanting to kill your kids because 
he, I, I mean, I don't know exactly the reasons, but that is kind of what you want. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he sent out, set out for the place God had told him about. Atonement. What did Oslo Jesus did? Atonement. He took the punishment for our sins. He didn't need to. Because he could have just left us all to die in our evil, wicked ways. <laughs> So he set out for the place God had told him about on the third day. The third day, interesting. Abraham looked it up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, Stay here with the donkey while I go, while I and the boy go over there. What is Abraham probably thinking? Like, well, he was told that through Isaac, your descendants will come like maybe God will bring him back to life that's the God could be what he's thinking logically we will worship and then we will then we will come back to you he did say we Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac right oh man anyway and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So yeah, he went to torch and carry up. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abram, Father, yes, my son? Abram replied, The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb. For the burnt offering, my son. God will provide the lamb. John the Baptist. Behold the lamb of God! <laughs> yeah. And the two of them went on together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Yes, it could be possible you're just misunderstanding things about how ancient stuff worked, and this is not a case of a psychotic god demanding child sacrifice for funsies. Maybe you are really just misunderstanding what this means. And that's okay, just admit you are. <laughs> he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar. Oh, on top of the wood. Oh, and you'd be like, this probably traumatized Isaac. Again, back then, human sacrifice was normal. He probably was just like, oh, well, I guess this does happen. Maybe like the crops failed or something. Uh, a lamb will show up. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But, 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 but. Here it is. There are atheists who will be like, Will you kill your son if God told you to? First thing, why would God tell you to kill your son? This is like a one-time thing. Don't see it happen anywhere else in the Bible. There's like that one time in Judges where a guy promises to sacrifice the first thing that walks outside his door. Probably one of the dumbest promises you could ever make. And God's just... Disappears from the whole conversation in it in story and showing his like disapproval, but the guy made an oath and back then you did not break oaths. Why do you think it's so heavily in other places in the Old Testament and New Testament? It was like, D you know what? They don't swear oaths anymore. <laughs> uh, also. Why do people think God will let you go through with it? But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, heaven, Abraham, Abraham, I am here. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham 
Abraham was willing to do it. He had that much faith that God would still hold through with the promises and all that other stuff. Why would God need to do this? Well, because Abraham failed a multiple times trying to give away his wife, trying to say, oh, this slave is going to be my heir because of blah, blah, blah. Or, like, oh, I don't really have to sleep with Hagar, Hagar because it, um, Sarah is not going to have wife or a kid. And then laughing when, like, no, he's not. But this time, he is fully faithful. Like, I don't know how this is going to end. And what does God do? Stops him. God doesn't let him go through with it. So the question, would you let, would you kill your kid if God told you to? It's totally, totally misplaced and totally, totally missing on the point of the story. God would never ever legitimately tell you to kill your kid as a sacrifice or pretty much in any other circumstance and it'll let you go through with it. Maybe if your kid like murdered somebody, it's like, yeah, the death penalty. Or maybe a few other scenarios, but God would never ever actually do this. Actually allow child you to sacrifice your child after he told you to. <laughs> it's probably just a test. And it's obviously a one-time thing because it never happens again. And it's supposed to foreshadow Jesus. Anyway. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. A thicket. What is a thicket? Well, a thicket is, well, they probably have some, like, thorns and stuff around, like, different thorny bushes or plants. Wait, a thorn. So, around its head was a thorn ring or thorn crown. Okay. Or thorns were probably near its head. And it was supposed to be the substitute for Isaac. The real sacrifice. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place, the Lord will provide. And to this day it said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Trust me. Other Christians and Jews, just back me up here. I know Jews, you don't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. But still, this isn't God literally being totally out of character and like demanding child sacrifice. That's not the point of the story. We're not dis dismissing the evils of child sacrifice or anything. It's just entirely emotion argument. More of the other side. It is. Sorry, it just is. The Lord, on, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. On the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. So salvation for me. So the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time. Wait, the angel of the Lord. Yes. Wait, but is he a, yeah, the angel of the Lord. Okay. And said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord. That because you have done this, and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as the sand on the seashore. Yes. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and though your offspring, and through your offspring all the nations of the earth, will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Because you obeyed God. 
That's the angel saying this. Anyway, then Abraham returned to his servant, and they set off together at Beersheba, and Abraham stayed in Beersheba. Okay, I'm knowing... So, every Friday night at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, my queener has a 20-question thing. If you have any questions, go to him, or leave it in the comments, and people probably might answer or just ignore you because they want to comment their thing probably sometimes the exact same question and people are weird like that. I also so yeah. Um I also don't leave a video where they talk go over Genesis twenty two oh wait no. That's video number twenty two. Oops. There it is. There's the right video. Genesis 21 and 22, so the previous ch chapter we went over in this one. Yes. Help you understand more, and probably inspiring philosophy. That's done videos, talked about in his Abraham thing. I said, I think my finger may have talked about him thing. But not what most atheists think is. In other words, go watch my other stuff. Goodbye.